she plays and with her energy, what does she bring to Gonzaga? Boy, a lot of energy. She can score in the low block, she can score at the elbow, and in a spectacular fashion. And for BYU, they are led by three guards, but the freshman, Shaylee Gonzalez, has burst onto the scene. 16 points per game. She's the second leading freshman scorer in the nation. Yeah, total game. Rebounds the ball, distributes, can score off the pass, off the dribble. Can't believe she's a freshman. Yeah, she is really good. The WCC tournament title on the line today. Both Gonzaga and BYU should be invited on, select, on selection Sunday to the big dance. They want to take home some hardware today. Gonzaga, even though they're the one seed, looking for some payback against BYU. Swept them this season. And some adrenaline there as uh, Brenna Chase, the junior for the Cougars, throwing that one way out of bounds. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of man-to-man -man defense early in the game and good man-to-man. -man. Both teams very, very effective in their half-court defense. The new uh, starter at point guard for Gonzaga, Jesse Loetta, in place of the senior, Laura Stockton, and right away they go to Rice. How about that finish? You know, it's one thing for a big first step, but the angles that she finished from, whether it was the game winner or that one, so amazing to watch. She's a lot of fun to watch. Very reminiscent of the game winner and answered right back by Brenna Chase. Yeah, keep an eye on Chase. The three guards for BYU are spectacular. Chase, very quietly, is incredibly efficient. That's her 78th made three of the season. In and out for the best long range shooter for the Zags, Katie Campbell. Yeah, keep an eye on her. It, how, how soft was that shot? That did everything but roll in. And normally the shooter's touch, that one should have gone down, right? Ooh, rejected outside by Chandler Smith. The WCC Coach of the Year, four of her five seasons at the helm in Spokane. Impressive stuff for her. Oh, she will absolutely. be in the NCAA tournament for the fourth time in five seasons. Sure will. You know, and, and she just kind of just takes one season to the next and keeps this Gonzaga program at an incredibly high standard. Isley Johnson in the lane, and she takes some contact. That foul on Rice. There's the head coach of BYU in his 18th season, Jeff Judkins. What a fabulous job he has done with this program. Looking for his ninth tournament appearance in the big dance. If he can get a win here today. Well, he really has. He, he's such a... Remembering Jeff as a player, those of us of, of, of my era remember what a good basketball player he was, but what a good coach he is. 18 years, every year BYU is, is at an extremely high level. Only fitting these two teams are playing today for the championship. The University of Utah alum, of course, played for the Jazz, along with the Blazers, Celtics, and Pistons, and has settled into Provo, Utah. There's Rice with a jumper out on top, no good. Both teams will push the ball. They're, 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 they're very effective. You know, teams that have great assist to turnover ratio. The ball will go side to side. They'll go inside and out. They just play a very sound half court offense. And you're seeing BYU give an example of that right here. That's Gonzalez with a nice feed down low. The 6-7 Sarah Hampson can't finish. Yeah, Hampson's become more and more a part of their offense. You can see right now, and they put the ball in the air. It's really fun to watch the angles as these guards get for the ball. Rice calling for it down on the block, but kicked away by Gonzalez. Yeah, I think a good start for, for, for Gonzaga is important because you've got two real key pieces, especially Laura Stockton, who has done so much to lead this team as a senior not going to be playing in this basketball game and also Jill Townsend just the toughness that came off the bench usually right about this time in the game she's in Had two unfortunate injuries yesterday in the semifinals Stockton with a knee injury Townsend their spark plug off the bench going down with an ankle injury neither will be able to play here today and that was Loetta with the bucket inside for Gonzaga big kick on top sending Loetta to the deck and then Paisley Johnson trying to slice into the lane, but cleared away by Worth. Yeah. Loetta again rejected. The only senior on the roster, Caitlin Aldridge, sending that one back. Just a good push right here, but watch the length of BYU. 
and you're going to see that a lot. That, that this is both these teams are very active and contest a lot of shots. Underneath, good execution on the out of bounds play. And finishing, and, and the interior finishing, so important for Gonzaga because that's obviously maybe one of the strengths for them in this game. Hampson can't finish. And once again, Gonzaga clears. They've done a nice job so far on the defensive boards. Yeah, they really have. They really have coming out of it. And BYU, you can see them kind of, now this is a, a new starting lineup for them. So a couple of the minutes here are important that they kind of get their feet down. But this is a deep Gonzaga team, used to playing a lot of players. You're not seeing double. Jen Worth, Leanne Worth, the twins, sophomores out of Chandler, Arizona, on the floor for the same time now for Gonzaga. Chase will trigger, and that is good from deep. For so many people for Gonzaga to guard. BYU has three guards that space the floor. That's a lot of territory. you got to have a hand in or at least contest the catch. I think it's almost by surprise. She's so deep. You don't think she's in range, but she is. And that time, Jen Worth, the 6'3 sophomore, putting it in. She averages eight. What a great start for Worth. You know, a lot of presence right there. You know, a good finisher regularly, but to get the game started like that, that's important to have that inside presence. Paisley Johnson with a step back three, and she nails it. Well, keep an eye on Johnson right there. She not only is going to be fun to watch offensively, but boy, can she guard. She was a key in their semifinal win. In the fourth quarter, did an excellent job on Yasmin robinson Baco, the MVP in the regular season of the WCC. And another bucket inside by Leanne Worth. At least I think these teams are comfortable in this championship game. I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of jitters. I'm seeing some people ready to execute and play basketball. I agree. You can tell these two teams came here to win it. And another long-range bomb nailed by Chase. Boy, Chase has come out of the gate. I really noticed her yesterday because she kind of just really kind of a, maybe a second or third option before right now she's playing like a first option whistle inside foul inside by jen work you gotta love the three ball and byu is appreciating it early look at the space they've gotten off the pass off the dribble and a third right there. We're out of the gate. Got a good one here. PN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal Investments, Retirement, Insurance, and Degree Deodorant, official partner of March Madness. Well, BYU is coming out hot. Four of five from the three-point line. Brenna Chase three for three from the field in this one. Nine points in the first five minutes. Yeah, Chase sitting on go. Look at that separation coming off the screen. That's pretty. How about another coming off the screen? That's twice. Now we got a little one bounce, pull up, step away, just as nice. And over the six foot three inch wingspan of Jen Worth, impressive stuff for the junior Brenna Chase out of Thornton, Colorado. Has started all 29 games. That is her 80th three-point make of the season, the most for BYU. And that's what makes them so hard to guard. But they also have the ability to put it down. So if your closeouts aren't really sound, they go by you and they create penetrate the pitch. Johnson trying to beat Smith off the dribble. Instead, it's poked away. Now that's a pretty good closeout. You can see Smith kind of staying in that play. I got a feeling that might have been a topic of discussion for Gonzaga in that situation. The Bulldogs are a sound, good defensive half-court team. Underneath, Gonzalez chase again. The first miss from deep, but the O board onto the floor now for BYU. It's Jasmine Moody. Underneath, rattling out and worth clearing it in traffic for the Zags. Yeah, really sound defensive, that whole possession. Being able to rebound out of that first shot will be a key for the Bulldogs. Loetta, too much on that one, and Moody 
with the rebound. Moody gets inside of Rice and finishes strong. Yeah, Moody coming into the game, a good interior finishing. That's key. Coming in, got, got a board early, got relaxed a little bit. Nice finish. Rice, good position down low. The hoop and the harm. How about that feed? That, that feed was outside the three-point lane with touch. Take a look here. That, that, that's a hard pass to make. I'm just telling you. That's a Sue Bird type of pass. But that finish by Rice. You know, she's good down in low. She's just as good on a face-up. She's just a hard guard. Uh, she did the work early getting position. You mentioned it, Smith, with a beautiful touch pass down low. And a three-point play converted by Zykira Rice. She has provided so much energy. The 6'1 senior out of Tacoma, Washington, Clover Park High School. Didn't play a lot her freshman year. Got a little bit of time as a sophomore and then double figures last year as a junior playing alongside Jill Barta, but has taken over as the number one threat for Gonzaga here in her senior season. Here's Chase with the up fake, can't get it off. Good closeout there by Jen Worth. Gonzaga doing a great job in the half court right now defensively. Moetta's pass tipped away. Chase has it, but then turns it right back over. And Brenna Chase, you can see her tapping her chest saying, my bad, trying to get out and push. Yeah, not something you see with these teams. They're, they're usually pretty good and efficient, you know, in, in, in their offensive situation. They both value the ball extremely well. This is Katie Campbell, the lefty. Gives it off into the game now. Luis Forsyth going to play more minutes today with the injuries to Jill Townsend and Laura Stockton. Here's Worth. Boy, that's sweet. Boy, Worth has really been a leader for the Bulldogs early. She's just been a finisher. Wherever she gets it on the block or in her cutting action, really poised, really smooth. Missed the first seven games this season with a broken finger and has come off the bench this year. Her sister, the starter, her twin, Leanne Worth. This is Forsyth, three on two situation. Out to their best three point shooter, and that is money. Campbell knocking it down, pumping her fist, and a big crowd here filled with Gonzaga support. Loving it. Oh, and the answer by Gonzalez. And that's what BYU will do to you. Their guard play puts such pressure on you. The great hands right there. Campbell loves this catch and shoot in transition. And then how about the answer? You know, before the defense is set, the ball is right into the gut and scores. Gonzalez on a big time finish. Now that breaks up the 8-0 Gonzaga run. BYU back again out in front by a point. And substitutes into the game for BYU in replace of Gonzalez, Maria Albiero. And there's the two that are missing here for Gonzaga. Just two significant injuries. Nice to see them on the bench with smiles on their faces. It's got to hurt physically and mentally to not be out there with their team as they try to win their third straight WCC tournament title. I'll tell you, Rice is really motivated early in this basketball game. Very much senior-like, ready to make plays for the Bulldogs. And on cue, she gets around in the post to knock it away. And a turnover, heading Gonzaga's way, and it's Rice with the finish and the fist bump. Campbell just realizing they're rushing at her, takes the one bounce and looks inside so effectively. Great up the floor right here. Campbell, kind of a hesitation. And I love the what I call offensive recovery. Rice literally created at the space at the right moment for that finish. And she's fired up. You can tell as a senior how much it means to her. Without her fellow Zach, <laughs> Laura Stockton, and Check that out. Is this the best or what? That's good. That's good. <laughs> well, I tell you, the fans have been great. These, the two days we've been here, Elise, have just been amazing. The atmosphere in the arenas have just been electric, and you're, you're feeling it today.
She's like Kira Rice with that blue hair, hair. She changed it a couple of years ago, and she said, it's just my favorite color, and I like to. <laughs> She's had that blue hair ever since. The fans absolutely love it. And why not? Like Kira Rice, one of the fan favorites, great personality, and loved in the Spokane community. And a good defense there, forcing a shot clock violation. And the fans on their feet right now. The defense for Gonzaga coming alive. They lead by four with the ball. Well, it has. It's all been triggered by the half-court defense and them being able to play out of it in situations that gained a lot of momentum here early, late in the first quarter. Jasmine Moody picking up those two fouls. So she's taking a seat on the bench. And back in the lineup, the starter is Hampson. Great opportunity here for BYU now for the last shot of the quarter. This has been exactly what we expected. Two teams ready for this moment. The champion on the floor right now. Which way is it going to go? Four guard lineup for BYU. Everybody under 5'10", except for the 6'7", the Hampson. Johnson. Going with six on the clock, there's time, two, one. Smith will let it go, and that brings us to the end of the first quarter. And we're falling behind at Gonzaga, giving their crowd a reason to get on their feet. It's Gonzaga 23 and BYU 19. The Hall of Fame point guard John Stockton looking on. His daughter, Laura Stockton, not able to play today. Unfortunately, yesterday in the semifinals, going down. And then Jill Townsend, another teammate, the sophomore going down. Here's Stockton, two big time players, the second and fourth leading scorers for Gonzaga. 18 points of production, six assists, six rebounds, and there's Laura's folks looking on and they can tell right away. There's nothing worse as a parent. John Stockton played in huge games during his time. Nothing is more nerve-wracking and heartbreaking than seeing your kid go down. And Laura Stockton with the brace on that left knee. She wanted this so bad after losing to BYU twice in the regular season and she can't be out there with her teammates, Dan. Boy, I tell you, that's a series of of images in my head. My, my son's playing in the Mountain West tomorrow for the Air Force Academy. To be a parent and to have that moment, and, you know, just my thoughts, my prayers, you know, are that things work out and everybody gets healthy. And of course, Laura's older brother David played for Gonzaga. John played for Gonzaga, so a long history of production on the men's and women's side for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Laura Stockton, a senior. Yeah, and was just such a leader for the Zags. Just really constantly that, that answer at that moment. But talk about that answers right there. Johnson continues to be that answer for BYU in a lot of ways. Out of the quarter break, Paisley Johnson getting BYU the big three ball. Cut it to one. Worth down low. A weak side help coming over from Hampson, and then she snags the miss. Yes, snags a good word. Hampson was quick to there and up in the air. Out to Gonzalez. She cans another three. BYU has been hot from deep in this game. Well, a lot of presence for a young player. And all year, you know, I think they, they talked about the, the trip they made to Europe and how she just kind of blended in and became a, a leader on the team at that. And she has played an incredibly pivotal role in BYU's success this year. Worth trying for the reverse, and it is denied by the 6'7", Hampson. And even better, keeping it inbounds, BYU on the run. Great point. Uh, turned a block into a live ball. Gonzalez looking for BYU's seventh made three. Instead, that one off the back rim. Chase, hesitation, down to Gonzalez, trying to go baseline, and the defense poking it away. They got numbers, five on four. Gonzalez, late to get up. Here's Campbell, too much on that one. And Johnson says, let's slow it down, set something up. 
Yeah, last yesterday, BYU went to a lot of pick and rolls. I think more than, than you would typically see out of this team. Brian from deep again. That's one. That one is from Aldridge, the senior. They call her a mother figure for BYU. <laughs> the only player that will not be back on this roster. Oh. Was an outstanding softball player. Future really bright for both these programs, but BYU really has a lot of talent in that they underclassmen and, and the future is very, very bright. Shot clock winding down, BYU stripping it. Here's Aldridge kicking it ahead to Johnson. Takes a little contact, finishes anyway. And they get the bucket in transition. What a battle we have here in the WCC tournament title game. BYU 27, Gonzaga 23. of the 64-team NCAA Women's Championship field again this year. We'll break down every team and every matchup in each region. 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app with a bonus hour of coverage at 8 on ESPNU. The NCAA Women's Selection Special presented by Capital One. Laura Stockton on the right, Jill Townsend on the left. What a game she had yesterday. 19.6 boards before she went down with that lower leg injury. You can see the cast on her leg. Just a sophomore honorable mention, all WCC, so she will be back with Gonzaga. But unfortunately for her, not able to play here in the tournament title game. And what, what a tough competitor. I was watching key points of the game, and she provided a level of toughness for the Bulldogs that you know they're going to have to look elsewhere for tonight. Well, that's the one thing that stands out for her. Jill Townsend from Okanagan, Washington, and grew up on a family ranch. And Coach Fortier has said she's just really tough, as tough oh. as a player as we have ever had. And you hate to see her go to you. When you knew that she went down to the ground, she was really hurt. BYU really utilizing the three-point shot. Six in the game so far. One of the reasons for the separation right now. Trying to go inside to Hampson. Poked away out of bounds, so BYU will set up. Jeff Judkins calling out the play. In his 18th season in Provo. Yeah, Hampson is a key because she her presence kind of allows the floor to be spread in such a way that, boy, this team can play. Look at their ability to shot fade and create. Just beating the shot clock buzzer. Can't get it to go, but the offensive rebound for the Cougs. And a foul underneath. Well, this has really been a battle of wills offensively as you watch this. The three-point shot for BYU. The interior scoring 14 points for the Zags inside, you know. The team that's getting three out of those shots, that, that might be the separation. <laughs> that foul on... Louise Forsyth from deep again. Man, she is beyond NBA range by a lot. Yeah. You know, it was just interesting last night, you and I were talking with Jeff, and I wanted to know more about her. She intrigued me a little bit because she just seemed to kind of fit in. You know, Johnson, Gonzalez making plays, but she just was so timely. And boy, has she been timely at the start of this game. Yeah, that is her fourth made three in the first half. And then Hampson defensively making her presence known again. Good offense, patient offense, able to relocate. Didn't really have, you know, if, if you're going to guard a three-point shooter, you got to be in a stance when the ball arrives. If you got to close out and Chase is on a kind of roll she's in, you might as well go to the other end because she's going to knock it in again. There's not many players that when they're that deep, you feel like you have to crowd their space. Clearly with Brenna Chase, you need to be out there. Oh, yeah. It's a matter of what they're doing in the game as well, and she's doing a lot in this game. She is in range just about anywhere past half court. Loetta leading the transition for Gonzaga. Yeah, the Zags looking to see that high-low. They're really good at running the high-low at different angles and then going inside and out. Forsythe. Touching a lot of the rim, but won't nestle in. 
Well, you, you described that well. That, that ball did everything but fall in for three. So BYU, a seven-point lead and the ball. Here she is again. Are you serious? Her fifth made three in the first 16 minutes of this game. It's a 14 to nothing BYU run. Yeah. Ball screen. On the bounce, going away from the basket. No problem, Chase says. I'm just going to knock in number five. Brenna Chase, the 5'9 junior, again. Yeah, good job screening right here. Look at that. You know, went under the screen. Campbell went under the screen. I think you got to go over on Chase right now. She's kind of proven to me any kind of space she can turn into a three. Well, she's got 15 points in the first half. She averages 12. on the play. Yeah, Rice, you can see how, how, how much attention Rice is getting. Boy, a lot of contact on her right there. I mean a lot of contact. Might have, might have been a call needed earlier in that possession. You saw the, the, the second call, but that first one might, might have been worthy of a whistle. Zakira Rice picking up her second foul. And Gonzalez this time slicing in for the bucket. Everything working inside and out for BYU. They lead by 12. Yeah, Gonzalez is such a player. There's so many images in my head of how she scores. That's, that's a very impressive thing for a young player. Rice going right into the body of Hampson, and she takes some contact. I'll tell you, Rice is playing tough. You know, she knew that that was going to cause contact, and she made that turn in, that Tim Duncan initiate contact type of finish. So the foul on Sarah Hampson, they're going to go over to the monitor and look because she took contact to the face. Sweeps below. Defense in movement. Yeah, the, the elbow contact but that that elbow was just trying to get under the ball to finish in my opinion you know she's just trying to make a basketball play yeah she's just trying to go up through contact and right. to be fair this is the only time in the year when when you go above when she jumps off the ground and raises to shoot that her elbow would contact a player because Sarah Hampson's six foot seven yeah, you, there's you, no other player where their face is going to be this high the, the elevation you know, is, is one of the most impressive things about Rice. And that actually took her to a plane above the defender in a wall-up position, even if the defender is 6 up. Zykira Rice can dunk. Attempted a dunk a couple of seasons ago in regulation, just couldn't get it to go. And her coach says, well, her legs, not as springy as they used to be, according to Zykira. <laughs> Come on, you're like 20, 21. I'd say they're still pretty springy, yeah. <laughs> I would say so, too. Coming up on the ESPNU Audi Halftime Report, the Player of the Year candidates selection show, a preview. John Brickley, Rebecca Lobo, and Andy Landers will have everything for your Halftime Report. The Audi Halftime Report coming up. Lots to get to. This time of year is so much fun. The NCAA tournament is great, and I love it, but all these tournaments, it's just as compelling when you have teams fighting their way in with a chance, no matter how bad their regular season was, to get to the NCAA tournament. I think both these teams here today will be there on Selection Monday. Certainly Gonzaga. Their RPI is 13. They are ranked 12th. It's their highest regular season ranking in Gonzaga history. They've won 28 games. They beat Stanford earlier this year, a Pac-12 tournament champion. But BYU has beaten them twice. And BYU has an RPI of 32. To, to your point, two things. One, I think they're both NCAA terms. And I think there probably should be more discussion about the Zags hosting in the first round. Yeah, RPI of 13. Exactly. They've won 28 games. Exactly. They have a top 10 win. Exactly. It's the strength of schedule that right now they're getting dinged on. There's nothing on that plays in their pocket. So, Benny Luna, one of our officials, that shot is uh, Brenda Pantoa, Cheryl Flores here in the officiating crew as well, saying incidental contact, and that is the right call in my opinion as well. It's unfortunate for Hampson that she took a shot to the chops, but I don't think there was anything 
well, intended there other than to get to the hoop. And, and what I really enjoyed, I, I was watching, we were talking, and I looked down at the Zags bench, and I watched Laura Stockton go over along with Stacy Kleinsmith, assistant coach, and, and talk to their team in a way that leaders do. It, it took that moment, you know, that, that developing leaders is such a, an important part of really good chemistry on basketball team. And you can see Laura Stockton has got a lot of that about her. She is third all time in Gonzaga history in assists. A lot like her dad, there she is on the right. Kira Rice getting a rest. She's got 12 points to lead the way for the Zags, and they need a run before halftime. They are down by 10. BYU has come out with a mission to get this WCC tournament trophy. Yeah. I'm... Jeff Judkins talking last night after their semifinal win over Pepperdine about how they were one game behind Gonzaga in the regular season standings and felt like, especially the loss against LMU that got away from them, they would have tied yes. for the regular season, turn, or regular season title. And Johnson is rejected by Chandler Smith. Great defense. Really good elevation right there. Good principles of keeping, you know, not roofing that, but keeping the hands very straight up. Moody back on the floor now with two fouls. And it looks like Paisley Johnson just lost that one out of bounds. Shot clock violation. Check that. Strong D for the Bulldogs just finishing that. Now they've got to kind of put some runs together, stops and scores. It's important that they close well down 10 here. No rice on the floor. She has been the Zags offensive leader. Melody Kempton on the floor setting the high screen. This is worth short. Bounces right to Moody. Gonzaga will work some clock up by 10. 2.45 to go before halftime. High pick and roll. Gonzalez pull up short. Bounces right to Loetta. Loetta's seen those extended minutes. In place with Stockton. And that one rolling up for Loetta, the junior guard. Zags with an eight. Yeah, exactly this last two minutes and 20 seconds. I think it's very, very, very pivotal for the Zags to kind of end on a run. You know, take it into halftime for two-point maybe deficit. Leanne Worth rotating behind, knocking that one away from Hanson. He's the 48. Looking to win her third straight WCC tournament title. That one by Chase, off balance, still hitting the rim, nearly went in. Bulldogs paying much more attention to where Chase is before reception of the ball. Chandler Smith takes it, feels the contact, and goes up. Paisley Johnson doesn't like that call. What an improvement for Paisley Johnson. Product from Everett Washington at the Glacier Peak High School. Outstanding athlete and tough as nails. <laughs> yeah, it, it was interesting to watch her talk. And, and she talked about defensively uh, uh, and about, you know, they need, she needed to step up in the second half and really guard. And you really like that, taking the pride she took in defending. And at the same time, she's scoring. But I love players when they accept the challenge defensively to do more. Yeah, she said yesterday in, in defending Yasmin Robinson, the, Baco, the WCC Player of the Year, and shutting her down. She said, hey, she was a Player of the Year, but at halftime, I decided I was not going to let her touch the ball. <laughs> and she didn't. She is feisty. Moody hammers that one down. The line drive three going through for the product from Honolulu. Yeah, Moody has been key. Interior basket, that step out three. Well, that's what you want. Players coming off the bench, 
that, that brings some quality to their minutes. Playing with two fouls here in the first half. There's Smith feeling contact. And the late whistle. Jeff Judkins, the BYU faithful, don't like that one, but Smith will head to the line. Yeah, take a look right here. You, you can see the kind of lowered the shoulder, but I, but I have to agree with the call. Watching it, you know, the spatial just in that movement, but I, I'm sure if I was sitting on the BYU bench, I might have a different angle on that call. Chandler Smith, pure from the line. BYU, less than a minute to go before halftime, an eight-point lead. Oh, Bulldogs extending their defense a little bit here, trying to gain a possession, possibly a turnover. Vernon Chase going baseline, and that one deflected out of bounds. Boy, both teams are just so efficient. They value the ball. You don't see the ball thrown around a lot. You, you, you see shots on goal on a regular basis. They assist well. Both teams offensively very, very sound. Gonzalez, beautiful runner off glass. Wait, just so many pictures in, in, in my head of how Gonzalez can score. How about that floater? Off the back, you know, catch and shoot a three. On the bounce, driving hard. Boy, she's got a whole game. Smith coming around the pick. That went off the back rim. So one last possession for BYU with a 10-point lead. The Cougars have come to play here at the Orleans. Really using the pick and roll. You're going to see Hampton step up here, try to get that mismatch, and then create. Gonzalez, the step back jumper is true. At the horn, Loetta. No good, but BYU playing a perfect half of basketball, 42 to 30. Jeff Judkins feeling great as they head into intermission. And it is halftime, 42 to 30. The two seat BYU over the one seated Gonzaga Bulldogs. They're looking for their third straight win against Gonzaga. It's halftime here in Vegas and after the break. We will send you to the Audi Halftime Report. We'll be right back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. Here in Las Vegas, the Orleans Arena, it is Gonzaga, the number one seed, versus the number two seed, BYU Cougars. BYU swept. The Zags in the regular season, Gonzaga desperately wants payback. They are down two of their big stars, though. Jill Townsend out with an ankle injury. Laura Stockton, the third all-time leader in assists in Gonzaga history, out as well, the senior. And there's a shot of them there. So Gonzaga shorthanded. We'll see if BYU can continue their torrid shooting from deep. Nine made threes in the first half, five by Brenna Chase, ball in her hand. She'll try it again, and this time it's short. Solid beginning for the Zags. You can see the attention Chase is getting and the persistence to stay in place. They need to make these guards shoot over top of them. They were intent on that in possession number one. A clerical error. Jasmine Moody only with one foul in the first half. It did get changed over, so if you're looking at foul trouble for BYU, they do not have a lot. No. Here's Gonzalez. That one a little, a little bit off balance, but the rebound coming down to Hampson, and she gets fouled. Hampson is such an important part to the offensive chemistry. Her ability to get on the glass, her ability to, to receive in movement and finish, ball screening. Now, that that's developed. I mean, she's a developing the ability to ball screen now dive to the basket and you're seeing a lot of growth in this young player she is just a sophomore out of linden utah if you remember the name her older sister jennifer was an all-american two-sport athlete yep 
Now playing with the Indiana Fever in the WNBA. And Sarah tearing her meniscus in August, getting ready for the volleyball season. So it's been a slow this recovery process and playing her best basketball, Love. averaging 12 points and seven boards over the last four games. Love that both sisters played volleyball and basketball. Just love the, the shared kind of athletic uh, ability that both kind of bring to both sports. Of course, her mom also playing hoop at BYU. Her brothers, Hampton families all over the BYQ, the BYU athletic department in years past. So BYU with a 14 point lead and the ball. And they kick it in the corner and it's turned over. Can see a couple adjustments on the Zags defensively. You know, that's a penetration in play, but they're not leaving. You know, they're not lengthening the closeouts against this really guard-oriented BYU team that can just break you down. They're kind of making, okay, you're going to bounce it, you're going to have to go finish it on. Looking for the high-low, Rice can't get it to worse, so she'll put the ball on the ground and draw the foul. Boy, foul on Caitlin Aldrich. She is such a hard guard, you know, at, at the high post, can go right, you just saw her go left, just a really difficult player to stay in the play with. She already has graduated with a degree in international relations and a concentration in Arabic. She also speaks Spanish. Wow. Raised in Tacoma, Washington, and she'd love to go play in Europe and learn another language. A think, really interesting person. I think person she's on her way to do that. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, she's a very good player, fun to watch. Her personality matching that hair, full of life and fun. Gonzalez kicking it to Aldridge. She tees it up. Their 10th made three of the game. Their season high is 12, also against the Zags. They're really spacing the floor well and continuing to knock down the timely three. Rice getting inside. The spin move draws contact. Penetrate pitch, relocation, cause a long closeout. You can see Worth having to cover ground. A real formula for BYU that's been incredibly effective today. Secure Rice drawing two fouls early in this one. That's Gonzalez picking up the personal. That's her second. So Aldridge has two, Gonzalez has two. Paisley Johnson also with two. But no foul trouble. Nobody yet with three on either side. It's just hard to get big runs in this game when both teams value the ball this well. Oh, Gonzalez splitting the double team and slicing for the score. And it's great verbs right there. Splitting and slicing. You know, when you that, that's a north-south type of description. And I'm telling you, that's very, very impressive to do against a team as good defensively. As his ex. Little crack in the defense. Gonzalez found it. This time it's Campbell teeing it up. And the lefty has such a good look and stroke. Well, she does. That follow through is picturesque, man. It's like you're reaching into a cookie jar and going straight down to, to grab a cookie coming out, and she holds it well. She led the WCC in three point shooting at 46% down low to Hansen. You don't get much easier than that. No. Good pass by Gonzalez, too. Up in the air to a player of size, but also the gathering ability of Hampson. Those are all developmental things that you see happening as this season goes on in her game. Rice using her quickness. Oh, that Woo. was sweet. Now, that's not easy to do on a player of size, and she went to the other side of the rim and created enough angle to get that, that PhD, that proper hand development to finish that spin. I like that. PhD. I, I borrowed that from my college coach. Coach Jim Burson taught me that, so I got to give credit where credit's due. Oh, there you go. He said that like to it. me a lot, Elise. <laughs> I didn't grab it, but he said it to me a lot. <laughs> it is Aldridge getting in the lane, and Gonzaga will clear. That's Chandler Smith with the defensive board. The 
Rice already with 18 points. And she will be called with swing in the elbows. And once again, Sarah Hampson taking a shot to the face. The BYU crowd does not like it. Yeah, squaring up here. Trying to create space in that situation. They're going to take a look at this. This one they might have. Yeah, it's going to take a little longer for them to really look into this one. It, it, there's a little bit about gaining space, creating space on that on that particular square up. Now she's trying to I always say sweep through the arms, and it's just Hampson at 6'7". Her face is right there, but I think that this will go a little bit something extra. Yeah, they're going to take a good look at that, and, and because you can see her trying to create space in that square up, it, a little more than just a natural basketball move into a shot. It's a little bit more like we're going to clear a little space. That's not a malicious act. She's not trying to hurt her in any way. She's just trying to get space to get her jump shot off. So in women's college basketball, the terms are unsportsmanlike and disqualifying. Certainly not a disqualifying. No. She's just trying to create space. However, yeah. it is on that edge of unsportsmanlike because you make contact with the face and right. you'll swing the elbows if the elbows come outside of the body. Right. I certainly don't think there's anything intentional. She wasn't no. doing anything other than trying to clear space. And it was a basketball move, but... Well, I thought Hampson did a good job. You know, she's using her length in that situation. She's up into there in that situation. Now, Rice is just trying to find an angle to elevate because she can actually get above Hampson in that situation. But in, in, in to me... It would not surprise me if they used the term, and I, I'm, I'm not wild about the term, but the term unsportsmanlike is, is what might fall in the category here. You know, the main emphasis is just trying to protect the players. Right, and I get that. And when there's contact to the face. For the officials huddling up, Verna Pantoa, Carol Flores, Vinny Luna. The officials here today. Here at the Orleans in Las Vegas for the WCC championship game. And the WCC does it interesting where the number one and number two seeds go right to the semifinals. So you can hear Benny Luna coming over to us, and we appreciate them letting us know it has been upgraded to unsportsmanlike. So what that means, it doesn't go as an extra foul or anything like that, but what it does mean is two foul shots for BYU. And if Zykira Rice happens to pick up another unsportsmanlike foul, she will be disqualified. And that is the difference between just a personal there that's an automatic two technical, or two technical foul shots, let's be clear. Looking at the Bulldogs and understanding, sitting down 13 right now and thinking about, well, how, how do you get back in the game from that? And I'll tell you, it's tough because one of the things is, can your defense turn them over and create offense out of your defense? Both these teams are so efficient with the ball, you don't see that a lot. Then it comes down to things like the three-point shot, uh, things like the foul line. Now that one, that one. I can see the Zags really kind of maybe making some headway if they can use that free throw line to score while the clock is stopped. First bit of foul trouble for Gonzaga with the foul. That is Rice's third, so she takes a seat on the bench and right away, BYU going down low. And that is Chalet Salmon, the 6'3 junior from New Zealand, cashing it in. Moody continues to be impressive off the bench. BYU bringing a little interior scoring to there. See how she moved it up the lane. Moody just did some early work to create space for that high low. And again, beautiful pass. I I'm telling you, you know, you you got to have a point guard touch. 
Valley Sports Center, 6 Eastern after PTI with Sage and Keith. Adam Schefter joins the show with today's NFL free agent deals, plus the latest on Conor McGregor's arrest. And on the eve of his pro day, a look at Kyler Murray's unique path to the draft at Sports Center after PTI on ESPN and the ESPN app. Good throw, no good, but the O board by Katie Campbell giving him another look. She takes it inside to the body. And that'll be Salmon picking that, up another one. And that's a couple things that can help you on, on the trail of a comeback. Offensive rebounds, turn them into fouls. Get yourself to the foul line. Get yourself a scoring situation with the clock stopped. That is the third foul on Chalet Salmon. Cashes the first one home. Campbell, an 83% free throw shooter. And she gets both. And she's got eight points in the ballgame. BYU trying to go 1 2 2. Takes the time off the clock. Maybe force a turnover. Yeah. Not taking time off the clock in the traditional sense, but just trying to make sure that BYU is careful with the basketball or they'll head the, head the other way. BYU coming out after intermission and increasing their lead. It is now 14. BYU, the two seed, looking for the upset here in the tournament title game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FARM. BYU has stretched their lead out to 14, 55 to 41 in the WCC Women's Tournament title game here in the Orleans. Everybody getting ready for the NCAA Tournament. Charlie Cream, the prognosticator who is so right on, has this and the latest, the number one seeds, Baylor, who wrapped up the Big 12 tournament title yesterday. Notre Dame, UConn, Mississippi State, the two seeds, Louisville, Oregon, Stanford, who Gonzaga beat earlier this season, and Iowa. You agree with all that? I do. I, I, I saw all four of those teams play over, over the last week, and, and to me, they are the four best teams in America. Poked away by Gonzaga. And they are trying to dig themselves out of a big hole here. Less than 15 minutes to go. Contact up top. And it looks like it'll be Gonzalez called for trying to push through the screen. Yeah. And that is her third personal foul. Opportunity to go to the line, which I think is really, really important right here. But it's a matter of stops, too. You know, you've got to put streaks together, and streaks start with stops. Leanne Worth, a 72% free throw shooter, can't get the first to go. And splits the pair. The Zags are such a deep team, and losing two players, you know, you, you think, well, they're, they're a deep team. But what it affects is kind of that rotation that you've developed. And those two, boy, and if you're a coach, you understand toughness. You understand mental and physical toughness. Those two both had that. That's a loss. No matter how you slice it, that's a loss when they're sitting there and not on the court. Certainly, Gonzaga has a lot of depth, one of the keys to their season, but no matter how deep you are, losing two players, your second and fourth leading score and your leader in assists, it will have an impact. But BYU, boy, have they played well. A 13-point lead for the Cougars. They, they really Fowler have. Underneath. BYU has... I, I'm looking at them and thinking, well, how would I guard them? Because they're a hard guard when you got Hampson in the middle. And then you've got four players that can make threes when they're into that kind of rotation. And you've got the playmaking ability of those three guards. Whoa. Hard guards. Hard guards. Jasmine Moody picking up that one. Remember, she was credited for two in the first half, and then they changed that. So that is just her second foul. And Jen Worth. 
locks him in. So it's an 11 point BYU lead. Gonzaga on a 5 0 run. Rice back on the floor for the Bulldogs. Oh, great take. Able to get to the lane, but then can't get the shot too much on it. And Luetta comes away with it for Gonzaga. The crowd, and I'm, and I'm telling you, this is a great atmosphere. You can see them starting to get a little excited. Good recovery from Rice. Almost lost it. Foul on the ground. And this time it's Sarah Hampson getting caught up with Zykira Rice. Remember Hampson is taking a couple of shots to the face. Those two battling it out. You better be tough if you're underneath the boards. That time getting caught up in the air. And coming down hard is Rice. And I'm thinking the left arm and the contact, the extension there as Rice pursued the basketball where the officials had to had a great angle on that. It was probably the call that led to this. Rice was fantastic in the semis versus St. Mary's in one of the best games you are going to see. Yeah. It was a double overtime, 78 to 77 win. She had 21 points and the winning bucket at the buzzer with her team down by one. Yeah, and losing two key players, a lot of emotion in the game. Two overtimes. Whoa. It, 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 it truly was classic basketball. And the Zags found a way to finish it. And after the two free throws knocked in, it's a 7-0 Gonzaga run. Chase with the answer. She has been fabulous shooting the basketball here today. Her sixth made three. She kind of looks at it like no big deal. But what she did so well was fill that corner on a baseline drive. And boy, was she ready to shoot it when she got it. Loretta had some space. Instead, going in the lane to Words, she kicks out to Smith. And big. the answer from Gonzaga, they needed that. Big. The answer is correct. Needed that. You know, they're in single digits. There's two and a half to play. Can they close and, and make this a five, six point game? A high pick by Hansen. Pretty pass just into the arms of Hansen. She's very good in the pick and roll. They don't post her up yeah. a lot despite being 6'7. She's not a back to the bucket player, but. She moves really well for her size. And, and how useful is it to put her in pick and rolls where you got to hedge a little bit. Now she gets separation, and Gonzalez just puts it up in the air. You know, the, I love that angle of passing where it's up in the air to a big post. Katie Campbell, the lefty, can't get it to go. So BYU content to take their time. They are. A minute and a half left here in the third and an 11-point lead. Gonzalez taking it right at Rice. The shot affected by the senior. Loetta out to Smith. And she knocks down her second three in a row. A big hit. And Gonzaga's fans coming to their feet. Trying to will the Zag shorthanded and all to a comeback win. They trailed by 11 yesterday against St. Mary's and shipped it down and got the win in double overtime. Can they do it again? Yeah, BYU Cougars, they're ready to do some handstands, some cartwheels. They're ready to party with an eight-point lead, 113 to go in the third. Chandler Smith for Gonzaga, though, trying to cut into this lead. Good spacing here. She's knocking down back-to-back. -back. In two classic ways, inside out for the three. And how about running the floor, filling the corner, creating a two-on-one. The ball never gets stopped. Oh, that means Smith is open. Two in a row. She is two for three from deep. The six-foot redshirt senior from Brewster, Washington. Started her career at Nebraska. She came back to Gonzaga and has a, had a great career. First team All-WCC. 
And already a master's, they're working on her master's in business administration with a nearly 4.0 GPA. Great, Gonzaga Bulldog. Yeah, picking up full, putting pressure. They're working a lot harder to keep the ball on one side of the floor, but that three ball has just been an answer for BYU. And they tie their season high. Now 12 made threes for the Cougars. A big one there out of the timeout. Johnson is so timely, both offensively and defensively. Uh, very much in the moment when they need to play, she's going to make it. The trap, nearly a turnover. And it'll be a jump ball. you got to give BYU some credit for coming out of that timeout and nailing a three. The momentum was clearly going the other way, and that's what timeouts should bring, a kind of presence about what you're trying to do and knocking down a three, Johnson delivered. Foul called away from the ball. It'll be on Jasmine Moody. And that's her third personal. One thing about BYU is they can rotate inside. Yeah. They got a lot of fouls to give between Hampson, Moody, and Salmon. Well, it's such a, a, a addition to your defense when you've got 6-7 Hampson who can rotate and impact the basket area as you get aggressive with your defense on the perimeter. That, nothing comes easy, even on, on situations where you're broken down and getting in the, in the paint. Well, Gonzaga has had to prove themselves at the line. They're 20 of 24, 20 points coming at the line. BYU has been visible. They, they only have seven attempts, but they've knocked in all seven. Yep. Paisley putting the ball on the ground, looking for the foul, not called. Three on two situation, and that pass air mailed. Looking for a tip. Lisa Fortier says, is there a tip? And now a technical foul called on Jeff Judkins. He does not like it. He thought there was contact on the Johnson drive. Sure and wow, nine point lead. We saw a crucial technical foul called in the Pac-12 championship, or rather semifinals, UCLA and Oregon. And could this be the change in momentum for Gonzaga here with nine seconds to go in the third? Chandler Smith knocking down a couple. Watch the drive here, and, and, and watch the upper body. I, I, I don't know, you know, I... To me, the hands were pretty disciplined, and that's normally what I look at. You know, are the hands roofed? Are they out there? They were, they were fairly disciplined to me in that, that play. And a loss of balance there. Jim Worth read it beautifully, had the ball in her hands, could have flipped it to Smith, but wasn't able to do so before stepping out of bounds. And a break for BYU with 1.9 seconds to go in the quarter. Can they get a shot off? Gonzalez, and she's uh. fouled. Ooh. You talk about undisciplined hands, and that is a mistake. Yeah, you just cannot foul this situation. Now watch what happens. And, and see, those hands were going forward. That I all, Hands are, are, are what cause fouls to be called to me. And in that one, you can see what I call a roof, where it's slightly was, was extending to, to the offensive player. And just 1.9 seconds left to go. You just got to stay straight up. Make them make a tough one. Instead, Gonzalez heads to the foul line. It's a 73% foul shooter. She knocks down the first two. And that will do it in the third. A big break in momentum there for BYU. Getting that foul call. Jeff Judkins, after picking up the technical foul, brings a sigh of relief. His team is up big here as we head to the fourth quarter. BYU with 12 made threes. They've tied a season high. Their inside game has been working as well. Gonzaga trying to pull out of a hole here in the fourth. We all have a hunger. To be a champion. The Mawale. Women's Basketball Championship begins March 22nd. Everybody trying to get 
to Tampa. That's why we're doing all this. And right now, BYU trying to punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament. We expect that they will be in anyway, but you just never know if you don't win. The tournament title here in the WCC, their RPI is at 32. They are 24 and six overall. They went 15 and three in conference play. And they want to make sure and do it with an exclamation point and take home some hardware. And out of the break again, BYU has been solid out of those timeout situations. A bucket for Johnson. Exactly, well said. Rice looking for hand. She finds contact and will head to the free throw line. She is 10 for 10 at the line. That's the most free throws for any Zag this season in a single game. Going inside. Rice is just so incredible at finding angles. You know, there were two defenders in congestion, and she found a way to get that foul. It is the second foul for Sarah Hampson, so the 6'7 sophomore. There's plenty of fouls to give here for the final quarter. Really looking at the stat sheet, Coach, it's BYU leading in the three-point category. They've knocked in 12 to just four for Gonzaga. And Gonzaga hanging around because of those free throws. They are 23 of 27, make it 24 of 28 with that final throw from Rice. Well, it just speaks to the impact of the three-point shot and what it really means. Separation at the three-point line is a real part of basketball in 2019. Johnson just off the front room. Rice clears. Early starts for the Zags are really important. You know, can they get this down into seven, into five, into a couple possessions? Boetta rattling off. Big rebound for Hampson. She just continues, you know, she's a young developing player, but boy, you see signs of something that's, that's, that's really kind of on an upward mobile type of progression. Again, wow. splitting the defense beautifully. That wow. is so hard to do when you're moving at that fast speed. And Gonzalez, the trap can't close, and she gets a wide open lane. Folks, don't try that at home, because it's not <laughs> as easy as that looks. You know, I'm watching her do that, and it's like, like, like a lot of good players. It just looks like, oh, that's just easy. Well, I'll tell you, that's not easy to go that north-south that effective. The leading scorer for BYU as a freshman, the second leading scorer in the nation for a freshman is Gonzalez. And she's been good in this game, tied for the lead in scoring today with 18 points. Gonzalez going to the deck, BYU wants a charge. This was the previous play. Here it is. There's the jump out, what, what you call a hedge. And her ability to, to dress gracefully just get here. But look right here. Little contact right there. Boy, she, she hit her head, looks like. And she's okay. That's good. I, I'm glad the official stopped that. You know, I mean, care of the player. You know, make sure she's okay. I, I understand, you know, the game being played. But care for the players, I always understand. Now the newcomer of the year in the WCC, also first team all WCC as a freshman rejected by Hanson. And rejected it in a live ball that they can now play with. And you alluded to it earlier, shot blocking is an art when you keep it in play. Gonzalez going to the ground. Foul called on it. Fifth year senior Chandler Smith. Yeah, Hampson right here. I love how she gets her hands up. And you know what? She's not even extended there. That just shows you her length. But she blocks it in a way to keep it in play and turn it into a to a rebound that now they can attack with. Averages nearly three blocks per yeah. game and in limited minutes. Yeah, and third block in this game. She's an impact in the basket area. And she averages only 19 minutes per game. Johnson taken off, get in the lane. Too many white jerseys there, and Rice will clear it out to Luetta. Looking for 
Rice inside. You can see her. It's such a pivotal penetration point. That's where they want the ball to go to get penetrated, and she is delivered. Wow. Oh, Rice going up to get that one. Keeps it alive. She swings through. Can't score it off the glass, though. And she turns around and lets out a little yell. She wanted that one to fall. She did. Great effort. Toughness in that situation. Just the ball not going down. It is getting to be go time for Gonzaga. BYU trying to hold on. An 11-point lead. Paisley Johnson drawing that foul on Rice. That will be her fourth. Paisley Johnson does such a good job feeling any kind of contact and making sure the officials will call it. Yeah. Well, she's screening. You know, I mean, the coach side of me loves the fact that she actually screened. You know, she actually put her body in a position, made it, it made the defense go around it. Now the defense chose not to go around it, chose to go through it. Getting in the lane is Gonzalez. This game has been physical. Two bodies again on the deck. These are two teams that are used to winning. They know how to win. They've won a lot. And they're going against each other, and you can just see the pull and tug that that brings out. Jen Worth picks up the personal. That is her third. And Gonzalez can't get the first one to go. At 18 points leading the way for BYU, along with the 18 of Brenna Chase, who had 15 in the first half. She's been quiet here in the second. Gonzalez has been the one heating up. Gonzalez, the Gatorade State Player of the Year in Arizona. She is a Gilbert, Arizona product. Chandler Smith teed it up short. Yeah, zone for BYU. Moving their defenses around a little bit. Rice on the bench with four personals. Luetta, ball deflected. Ten on the clock. Paisley Johnson reaching her hand in there. Looked like nearly a jump ball. One official looked like they were about ready to raise it up in a jump, but Benny Luna saying, nope, too much contact first. Yeah, he had good position, the official, on the back side. And just seeing the contact before the... You're right, the game has gotten physical in this, this situation. They know time is running out in the fourth quarter. Another deflection. Chase poking it away from Paisley Johnson. We'll turn it around and run some clock. 12-point lead. Five and a half to go. BYU trying to close this one out and break the two-year streak of titles for Gonzaga in this tournament. This is BYU's fourth appearance in the last six years in the title game. Well, how about that spin move? You know, Gonzalez just shows you one more thing every minute you kind of watch her. Here she comes. Now, watch that spin move. Now, now for those of us that are a little bit advanced in age, Earl Monroe the Pearl. mastered that move. Are you calling me old? No, no. You just appreciate classics. But Earl, the Pearl Monroe, developed that move. And I'll tell you what, I... I'm glad to see it back in basketball. Trap down low, thrown up, hits the rim. It's Melody Kempton. But a lost BYU. possession, and BYU uh, with BYU. the ball. And calling their first time out of the half. They will have three remaining. Jeff Judkins with 4.34 to go said, let's make sure we know what we're trying to do. We have a 12-point lead, and we want to win some hardware. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Investments, retirement, insurance. And Mountain Dew. Do the do. 
week, lots of hoops. How about the Big 12 championship on the men's side? Kansas, not the number one seed for the first time in 14 years. Instead, it's Kansas State. How about that? The job Bruce Weber has done there. So many good coaches in here. I'm looking at Baylor. I saw Baylor early in the year. Scott Drew lost his leading score and has turned around and brought so many good coaches in that conference. But how about Bruce Weber? I'm really happy for him. One of the really great ones. Four and a half minutes to go here in the WCC Women's Tournament Championship. Selma will be taking home a trophy. BYU looking for their third tournament championship, but their first one since 2015. Gonzaga had it, and Rice thrown it away. Brenna Chase right there, and they say slow it down. The ball more important than a bucket. Really impressed with the time and score of BYU. They really, and, and, and it's because of the great guard play. They can really understand situations. They shoot at the right time of the possession. They're very hard to play catch up on because they just don't beat themselves. Johnson again using her speed to get inside. Wow. You know, just a really well executed play and Johnson just a tough, tough finish. 17 points now for the sophomore. And coming away with the rebound and once again slowing it down. Yeah. Paisley Johnson yesterday said, we're excited to get Gonzaga. We want to show the nation that those two games that we beat them were not flukes. We are here to get the tournament championship. And she and her team has backed that up. Yeah, they have. And they've done it at both ends. Before they have been so impressive with the guard play. We're seeing an example right there. Gonzalez. Getting inside, some contact, not called. Instead, Benny Luna saying, step on the sidelines. So it'll be Gonzaga basketball. Down by 14, under three to play. They're going to have to start going for the long-range shots, picking up the pressure. This is a big hole to dig out of as Gonzaga trying to win their third straight WCC tournament title. But, can, but, but BYU has had their number. They lead by 14. Right back. <laughs> 72 to 58, the two seeded BYU Cougars looking to beat Gonzaga for the third time this season. It was the first time in program history they were able to sweep the regular season series against the Zags. We want to prove it was no fluke. And they want to ensure they get to that NCAA tournament as well. Coach. Absolutely. I, I think you're going to see both these teams in the NCAA, but BYU has really put on a stellar performance and sitting in a pretty good position with 2.38 to go. Jeff Judkins in his 18th season looking to head back to the dance for yeah, the ninth time. Let me tell you, you don't want to be on the team that's matched up with either of these teams in the first round. And seeding will be interesting how that plays out. But these are teams that have a chance to win games in the, in the NCAA tournament, not just get there. Well, remember last year, Gonzaga went down to Palo Alto, yep. faced Stanford, could not get the win, but then came back in the regular season this year and beat Stanford yep. back in November, and that has carried them. Their RPI very strong at 13. And props to Stanford. I thought... The game plan, the execution in the finals was stellar. Tara Vanderbeer proved the Hall of Fame coach that she is in that one, no doubt about it. Trying to go up top to Hampton. She hits the deck and will head to the free throw line. Jen Worth picking up that one. Gon Gonzalez has such an awareness of where Hampson is. And she has an awareness to put the ball in a position in the sky that she can grab and do something with. And that, you know, that's, that, that's artful. Because not every player you play with can you do that. You know, you're looking at angles on a bounce or a chest pass. She can also put it up in the air and Hampson just loves catching it up there. Into the lane, too much on that one. And just over two minutes to go. Look how Gonzalez goes backwards. Now splits. 
I, I'm, those are incredible instincts when a player will gain space by dribbling back and then split. So we just got to know Lisa Fortier, the head coach for Gonzaga, had a family emergency and had to leave. Her husband is there on the bench, Craig Fortier, and they do have children. They were all with them. She put them into bed last night. They're all fine, yeah. but she's had to leave the bench due to a family emergency. So Hard. hope everything is okay with the Fortier family. Absolutely. It was. We spoke to her just as she got her children to bed last night. difficult week with the injuries for Gonzaga and now the loss which looks like they will suffer here in the tournament championship game uh, yesterday's win versus St. Mary's was high level in epic back and forth game and the grittiness of Gonzaga to pull that out they trailed by 11 and St. Mary's put up a fight yeah. And there were many times that I leaned over to you and said, oh, St. Mary's is going to do it, only to have Gonzaga come up with another big play. But losing Stockton and Townsend, Fortier said it's a bittersweet moment that forever she'll say that this is one of her most favorite moments as Gonzaga's head coach or assistant coach. She's been there for, in both capacities, but... This one will be a performance that she will not want to remember as her team unable to challenge BYU here in the championship. And BYU's fans, take a look, well supported here behind the bench, a wonderful crowd on both sides. What our camera has done such a great job of, of bringing us to Serena, but sitting here and looking at the support of women's basketball for the West Coast Conference today. And I, I'm just turning around right here. I got to applaud the people here because this has been a great atmosphere at 1 o'clock here in Las Vegas. And believe it or not, Lisa, there are other things to do what? other than be a basketball game. But they wanted to be here, and it's been a great showing. Las Vegas, the epicenter of basketball on the West Coast. When it comes to tournament time, this is it feels like this is where you want to be. And the WCC does it a really, I think, a really good way where the men and the women play at the same time. They share the Orleans Arena. And so the fans from both schools can stay and watch both the men's and women's programs. And they get great support on both sides. I, I couldn't agree more. You and I were leaving to go work on this game yesterday. And the atmosphere outside was it made me want to go back in <laughs> but work or at least to get go, you go join the tailgate right they <laughs> yeah, have music yeah, glass and yeah. barbecue yeah and beverages well, well done a good time well done so a minute to go in this one byu oh, looking yeah. to close it out with a 15 point lead little extra contact loetta will be called for that one brenna chase number one in blue got things started for byu hit five threes in the first half she has six in the game part of her 20 points well and what's so great is that years from now fans of byu teammates of byu you'll you'll get together you'll be at a reunion you'll be at something and they'll remember how she got this thing started this championship because her presence early in this game was definitely a storyline Kira Rice uh, good. with the three ball. We got to pay some props to Rice. I tell you, she's had a very, very impressive game. She has delivered. She has finished. And, and that three right there just shows you where she's, her mentality has been great. I think that might be the first three in Rice's career. She had not even <laughs> attempted one this season. I know she didn't hit one in her junior year. So that's the first three in her career. Congratulations. The fans loving her. Well, just part of the basketball in champ week, the ACC tournament. Duke and North Carolina, the three and two seats. Tony Bennett with Virginia getting the defense ready to rock as the one seed. And they'll see Florida State as the four seed as things develop. I don't count out Miami. I saw Jim Laranega's team play yesterday in between our preparation. I had that on the background. 
He's got some tournament success, and they look they look like a team that might might find a way to keep winning. Zakira Rice has been such a great zag. This will be her final trip to the Orleans as a senior. Went over a thousand points here today as a zag. And then just hit her first career three as well. And they got plenty to look forward to. They will be heading to the yeah. big dance. Yeah. I will say they will be, they were slated to be a five seed before this game here in the tournament title. Jeff Judkins at the top of your screen, giving a pat on the back Boy, he, to his junior. Really closed the year in the tournament play. You know, I, you'd have to think they're playing maybe their best basketball at this point. That's what you want to be doing as you close the tournament play out and get ready for the NCAA. They had a three-game losing streak, LMU, or excuse me, LMU, Pepperdine, and St. Mary's, but have won now eight in a row if they can hold off here. Yeah. Those three guards are going to make it a very hard matchup as you talk about round one of the NCAA tournament when you throw Hampton inside and what that can bring and the fact you can space the floor with your fourth. Now BYU can smell their first tournament title since 2015. This will be their third. They won it in 2012. 15. And they will win it. In 2019, Campbell looking for three, and it is cleared by Gonzalez. Boy, with the guards good. Chase with 22, Gonzalez with 20, Johnson with 19, and BYU's backcourt stellar. And adding to it is Chase, her seventh made three of the game. Loetta knocking it home. She had to play an expanded role without Laura Stockton. Played hard. BYU is your Final WCC BYU tournament champion. and BYU. What a great performance in this tournament and especially here today against a very good Gonzaga Bulldog team. They sure had. The ability to get in this moment and to make shots and be as efficient as they were in the basketball game. A true champion, BYU. Zykira Rice solid for the Bulldogs. She had 25 points in this one on just 10 shots from the field. A perfect 12 of 12 from the line. But BYU was getting production from all over the court. Well played game.